we vote with our wallets. If we hold our wealth in physical gold and physical silver, that's outside of the system. That's the only thing that is truly outside of the system. And as the Bank for International Settlement says, that gold held at home runs no geopolitical risk. And it is the only, the only financial asset that runs no counterparty risk. All of the rest of that stuff, they're contracts. That's all counterparty risk. And they're the ones that wrote the contracts, not you or me. And right. who reads them? Lynette Zhang, a noted financial expert and chief market analyst at IDM Trading, emphasizes the significance of owning physical gold and silver for safeguarding wealth outside traditional economic systems. The latest Kitco News weekly gold survey sees retail investors remaining very bullish on the yellow metal for the week ending October 27, while market analysts expect a pullback after this dramatic two-week surge. Lynette suggests gold is vital in the global financial system when trust in fiat currencies diminishes, necessitating a tangible element in new currencies. It's important to remember that gold and silver hold their value under a collapsing currency, so it's best to keep your holdings in precious metals until the need arises. This is especially important in a hyperinflationary environment, where the value of the currency is literally depreciating by the hour. She also suggests the IMF might have more gold than it admits and highlights the challenge of verifying gold ownership with unclear title changes. The IMF holds around 90.5 million ounces, or 2,814.1 metric tons, of gold at designated depositories. The IMF's current total resources of about SDR 983 billion translate into a capacity for lending of about SDR 696 billion, around 925 billion US dollars. As it in June 2023, gold held by central banks in developing countries has grown by 52% over the past decade to reach 338 million tons last year, according to IMF figures. Lynette notes that many countries and top financial leaders collaborate through the IMF to create a global currency. Now, we present the clips of Lynette Zhang's insights from a recent interview with The J. Martin Show. Before we continue to delve into this discussion, please subscribe to our channel and activate the bell icon for timely updates. Whoever holds the gold has real purchasing power because gold is used in every single sector of the global economy and does not require any sovereign to say this is money. It's been treated as money for thousands of years. So and the IMF, you know, the countries give the IMF gold, right? So I think it's whoever really actually holds the most gold. You know, it looks like the U.S. does, but do they really? I don't know. I think there's going to be a big accounting and a big reckoning, and that question will be answered. But, um, you know, I think gold has a lot to do with this because this fiat money whether it's US dollars or Canadian dollars or, or SDRs or anything, it requires public confidence. And what happens at the end of this cycle is there is a component of gold in that new currency, whatever that currency is, because the public loses all confidence in the pure fiat money. So I think it could definitely come out of left field. I think it could definitely be the IMF I think it would be very easy for them to have the most actual gold versus just saying, well, this is how much we have. You can't audit it. We can't count it. And even if you see those bars, you don't know who the legal owner is because they just changed title. And I think that, you know, we've been moving or they've been trying to force us into a one world government and a one world currency for a very long time. And when 2008 happened, I knew that the system died and it was just put on life support with all this free money to make it appear to be okay. But uh, China actually came out and said, what about the SDR? Now the SDR is, has been around since 1969. It's a basket of currencies that's issued by the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, who there are 196 countries in the world, I think it's 191 right now, are members of the IMF. And that's all treasury secretaries and central bank chiefs. And 
they're, they are working on a one world currency so that governments and corporations, global entities would uh, work inside of this SDR, but then easily translate into the local currency. So I personally think that we're going into a system where, uh, I mean, neither one of those entities, treasury secretaries or central bank chiefs, neither one of them are elected. Right. right? So we're, I think that, that the IMF is the one that's going to come and take over and be the global super superpower. Uh, they have they, they say that they have the cleanest balance sheet because they don't have to issue debt. It's the members that are issuing debt and they can open up the SDR to every single currency. There's no limitation as to how many currencies can go inside of that SDR. And then you have, it's even worse. I mean, unelected officials dictating. And if you look at the IMF's approach when they've loaned countries money, you know, look at Greece, austerity, 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 raise taxes, reduce benefits, which is what's going to happen anyway, whether it's the IMF or anybody else. They're not really going to have much of a choice of that. But uh, I don't I don't think it's going to be one entity. I think inside of the SDR, you will see uh, a number of countries, maybe even like the BRICS, because the BRICS are issuing their own currency, but that's so they, they can trade amongst themselves, as you were saying before, bypassing the dollar. Lynette Zhang believes the U.S. dollar's role as the world's reserve currency in place since the 1940s is changing. The U.S. dollar's longstanding dominance in global finance is showing signs of vulnerability. Key indicators include foreign central banks selling U.S. treasuries, a shift in global currency reserves, more oil trade in non-dollar currencies, decreased international reliance on the dollar, a weakening dollar, widening credit spreads for dollar debt, and cautionary advice on diversifying large dollar holdings from institutions like the IMF. Lynette notes a shift from the U.S. dollar in global trade as nations like Saudi Arabia align more closely with China and Russia. The BRICS group of countries Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa has proved to be the ideal platform through which China and Russia could drive the de-dollarization agenda. The recent addition of six new member countries, including oil heavyweight Saudi Arabia, UAE, and Iran, was a big win for the BRICS. The 11-member grouping now represents a major block of energy producers, 45% of global GDP, and 50% of the world's population. Let's get back to the interview. Because the U.S. dollar has been, quote unquote, the world reserve currency since the 40s. And so as the world reserve currency, and now this has not really been true since 2000, and two, but or two thousand when they brought the euro in. But in 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 theory, anyway, if you are a government, a corporation, or certainly individuals know this, going outside of your borders to buy anything, lumber, steel, oil, etc., you had no other option but to do it with U.S. dollar. You know the arrangement that the U.S. government had with the Saudi Arabian government created that petrodollar and the whole system is now crumbling. You know, we know that Saudi Arabia has have joined the BRICS nation and they're getting much cozier with China and Russia and really kind of snubbing the US. So what's really happening in here too is the overt loss of the US dollar's position as the world reserve currency. Now, the normal public doesn't understand any of that. They know that if they're going to travel in Europe, um, there used to be, because well, let's see, I was in France and, oh, it was a number of years ago and I was there recently, but a number of years ago, they wanted dollars. And so anybody out there that's traveled around the world um, a while ago, know that everybody preferred to get paid in dollars, not the local currency. But today you go over there, you're not paying in dollars. They don't want dollars. So there is a transition and a shift that's happening in the U.S. in that status. In the meantime, you have the government and, and individuals as well. There's a lot of polarization 
that is happening. And it's always kind of like a divide and conquer. So truthfully, and this is not something I can prove. So you have to know this is just my opinion. But when you are out of purchasing power value in the currency, which all currencies basically are, officially the US dollar has lost 97% out of its original purchasing power. The tool that they use to regulate the rate and speed of inflation are interest rates. And we had been anchored for what, 15 years at 0% interest, which means all of those entities that had to buy dollars to satisfy their need to go globally and buy other assets and goods, right? When you take a look at that, I mean, we are, do they need this crisis to transition us into CBDCs? Yes, they do to create enough of a panic. And, and if you look to from, from crisis to crisis, to crisis, to crisis, to crisis. So at this point, people are looking at it. They don't understand how it, that it impacts absolutely everything they do, including the government's ability to grow more debt and create more dollars and bail out banks like they did with Silicon Valley and the regional banks back in March and April. They can't even really create those dollars without creating that hyperinflation. This is the end of the current system. And you really need to get to safety. And we've been sold a bill of goods that the treasury market is the largest and safest and most liquid pool. But that liquidity, the ability to buy and sell without majorly moving prices has been declining in earnest since 2015. So I think this is it. I mean, I, I really do. Gold and silver gain prominence in economic uncertainty for their stability in currency crises. The U.S. dollar's status as the world's preferred currency for international trade is changing. The dollar rose 0.2% against its rivals, making gold more expensive for other currency holders, while benchmark 10-year U.S. Treasury yield were at 4.8335% after briefly rising above 5% on Monday. How do you think the changing dynamics of global currencies will impact your investments in the future? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. If you find this video informative, don't forget to show your support towards our channel and turn on notifications to stay informed about our latest videos. See you in the next video.